Let's talk about range bag loadouts. One of the questions we get quite a bit is how do you guys pack for the range or can we see a range bag loadout? So today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna get into everything that I have, um, the way I have it packed out, kind of what uh, this range trip would be, um, whether that's for a match or a class or what have you. Um, and uh, kind of give you guys an idea of how you might want to pack out yours. We'd like to thank Blue Alpha for being supporters of the channel. Blue Alpha is a company down in Georgia making really high quality nylon goods. Justin and I have been using them for a really long time. So if you're looking for uh, really good concealed carry belts, battle belts, mag pouches, even fanny packs for concealed carry, they are the place to go to. We will leave an affiliate link down in the description of this video. Be sure to check them out bluealphabelts.com and we appreciate you using that affiliate link because it does help us out and helps us fund ammo and things for this channel. We'd also like to thank Big Tech's Ordnance for supporting the channel. Big Tech's Ordnance is an online retailer that is curating a very wide selection of very high quality products. And so if you're looking for something for your pistol, for your rifle, any sort of gear at all, be sure to check there first because they probably have what you need. If you use code GATEWAY10, it saves you money and it helps us out. So we appreciate you going and showing Big Tech's ordinance some love. So getting right into it, what is this bag at its core? So this is the Pro SEMA backpack from Savior Equipment. Um, I do wanna give Savior a big shout out. They did send this out for me uh, to try out. I've been using it since the day they sent it out. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, there are maybe one or two things that I would potentially change, but I actually think they might be addressing that in the future. So. Um, Overall, fantastic range bag. Um, now, what is this not? This is not my range bag for teaching classes. Um, so when we teach classes, um, I have to carry a lot more gear with me. This is for a solo range trip um, or going to a match. The way I have this loaded out, it has a little bit more than I would if I'm going to match. This is just kind of for a solo range trip, kind of like uh, this range trip that Justin and I uh, did today. So I've got a few extra things. Um, but uh, for a match, it's gonna be a little bit of a lighter loadout. So let's get right into it. Um, first of all, you can see on the outside of the bag here, I've got my belt hanging here. So this belt is um, attached, just kind of these uh, little loops. So if I just unloop these, there's little snaps and some Velcro, the belt pops right off. So um, this is a really convenient way to fit the belt. You don't have to stuff it or curl it up and stuff it down in a pocket. So I really like that feature. That's honestly probably one of the most handy. Um, the belt itself is a belt from Howitzer. Um, I believe they call this the battle comp belt. Um, I've got a hammer armament, a balder holster um, with also hammer armament mag pouches. I've got them mounted to a variety of tech lock as well as ELS. I've got a magnet on there for USPSA. Um, the holster's on a Henning T1000 hanger and I retrofitted this belt with a uh, ratchet strap because I really like how this attaches. Um, it doesn't come that way from Howitzer, uh, but I do that to pretty much all of my competition belts. So that is the belt. Um, if I'm going to shoot rifles, I might also pop the ELS off um, and run a rifle mag pouch instead. Um, I have the ability to do that. Um, or potentially if I'm shooting a, a class or something like that, I might add even another one of the uh, mag pouches. But super versatile belt, I like that a lot and it's my go-to competition belt right now. Um, on the outside of this, of this bag, this is the most boring. I don't have anything in this outside, outside pocket and that just goes to show how much storage there is in here. I have so much packed into here already, I don't feel the need to throw anything in here. However, what I have put in here in the past is stuff like um, cash for range fees, um, sharpies, things like that. Um, and, uh, and sometimes I will st stick like a, a bag of beef jerky or something in there as well. So that is the outside pocket. Don't really use it a whole lot just because I haven't needed to. Um, you've got a little bit of Velcro loop on the outside here. Great for patches. This is the gateway defense, um, performance standards patch. So that's the patch you earn if you shoot the six R six, um, either in person or out of class or I'm sorry, in person or, uh, online. Zipping down this second pocket here, this is where I think this bag is really, really cool. So um, what we've got is I've got three little pouches um, that are semi-transparent here in the front. Um, these each hold different things for me. And then in these mesh pockets here, I can keep additional things. I usually keep a small rag in this pocket, but um, 
I misplaced it after the last time I used it. I think it, may, it might be in the wash or something. Um, but I usually have a small rag here. In this pocket down here, I simply have a stapler. You guys all know that staplers are super important for um, any sort of range trip to staple up your targets. In, the, um, in these right here, I've got uh, a variety of different things. So this is kind of a mess, but I've got um, blue Loctite, that's super important. I have uh, some training aids, right? So these are the, um, uh, the training sites that where you can show like the red dot or the iron sites. And then I also have my, um, my USPSA Wow, I can't even think of what these are called. What are these called? Overlays, overlays. I was about to call them a scoring card. Um, I've got a magwell in here, right? Um, this is for when my reloads are sucking a lot and I'm tired of being embarrassed. Uh, no, for, for, for all intents and purposes, I keep this in here um, for, uh, for limited optics in USPSA or for PCSL. So I've got a magwell in here. Um, I also keep a spare 17 round mag in here as well, just kind of as a backup. Um, sometimes when I'm shooting concealed, I might not always have um, a bunch of uh, flush fit mags. And so I kind of like to carry one for training purposes if I'm doing uh, concealment stuff. Um, I've got a whole bunch of Sharpies in here. Um, Sharpies are super important. Multitasker Twist, this is a really nice tool, kind of a multi-tool that's designed for gun owners. I use this for zeroing and stuff a lot. Um, this thing is really nice. A lot of times I'll pull this out of the bag and stick it in my pocket. Um, and then that way it's, it's handy, ready to go. Um, I keep a little tiny flathead screwdriver for some of my optics that need a very tiny screwdriver. I have a lot of redundancies with screwdrivers. I got another bit driver here. Um, bits for my um, multitasker. This goes to my magwell. This is a spare guide rod and recoil spring. And this is actually super important. So Justin remembers this probably a few months ago, we were at Schultz uh, Gun Club, I was shooting a match and I was getting all kinds of malfunctions from one of my springs having worn out. Um, I typically was running the tungsten guide rods with the 15 pound springs and I was getting a lot of malfunction. So I went back to stock and um, I was kind of stressing out because I didn't have one of these. So now I always carry these in my bag. See our, uh, 2032 battery. I also like to keep one of these in my bag um, because most of my optics run off of this battery. So I like to keep this um, close by um, just so I can swap the optic battery if I need to. Couple of bits. These bits fit all of the, um, or both of the different types of screws. So I've got a, a, a T10 and a T15 in here. This fits all of my optic screws that I have on my guns. I also keep a spare 16 pound uncaptured wolf spring in here. Right now I'm playing around with tungsten guide rods and kind of going back to it, but having a heavier pound spring. So I've got a fresh one in here in case I run into any malfunctions. Not running these at matches yet, but I do have one in here just in case. So that is the top little pouch. The nice thing about these pouches is they are Velcro back. So they pull right off and I can grab this with full of tools or whatever and, and, and go to the safety table or what have you and work on um, whatever I need to do. So Velcro back, super nice. Um, I actually like a few more of these. These are, these are pretty handy. So down here I've got, um, this is my tools, right? So I have a torque wrench. Torque wrenches are very um, useful and you really should have one if you're mounting any sort of optic. If you don't have one, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, you're wrong. So you need a torque wrench. Uh, staples for my stapler. I carry a bunch of Allen wrenches. Um, a ton of my stuff uses Allen stuff, and uh, this includes one that's super small, small enough to replace um, that little tiny screw underneath the optic for my M&P guys. You know, it's a .050 size, which is really small. So I have a full set with all the sizes that I need for uh, my guns and things. Um, and then I keep a just a just a bit driver with a bunch of different bits, um, and I should be able to tackle anything I need with that combination right there. So that's my tools, and then in the bottom here. The most important thing of all is a pacer gun. So the pacer gun, uh, it comes in very handy. No one has time to do stickers by hand anymore. Uh, it's 2024, so buy a pacer gun, guys. Um, and then these, I just have a couple of extra pacer rolls so I don't run out. Um, that's going to affect my training quite a bit um, if I don't have enough pacers. When I don't have enough, I usually stop pacing. Um, and then that is, uh, that is not great for training. So that is the outside bag or uh, the outside pocket right there um, with all of my removable little um, pouches. And getting on to the right side over here, um, they have really nice stretchy pockets, big enough to fit a Nalgene or something similar. So I usually have a Nalgene in there. Um, 
which reminds me I lost mine, so that's fun. In, in this pocket, what I keep is uh, my concealment holster. So um, I stick my holster in here with my uh, carry mag, right? So carry mag is down in there. Uh, a lot of times my X300 is in there if I'm gonna take that off and run that. Um, this is, uh, I always make sure not to have my gun in here, but just the holster um, because just per USPSA rules, uh, if anybody ever saw that, you'd get DQ'd. Um, but I keep this in here, and even though this is a really wide holster, Tier 1 Axis Elite, uh, it still fits down in that pocket really nicely. So um, I will throw my carry gun holster in there, or I might throw in like a, like a non-light bearing or something like that in case I want to get in some concealment reps um, as well. So holster down in there, really convenient pocket. Flipping around to... Uh, the other side, um, well actually let's go to the top here, let's go to the top. So unzipping this um, all the way, this kind of is like a, almost like a clamshell opening, right? So this opens up, again another mesh pocket here in case you want to stuff anything in there. I usually don't. Um, but in the top here we have quite a bit of room and this is where I keep the majority of my stuff. So right on top here I have some MSA Swordens for over the ear stuff. Um, anytime I'm shooting rifle I like to shoot um, with over ears as well as my inner ears, um, as well as some indoor ranges if I'm ROing like open guys or something like that with big brakes or something, uh, I want to run over ears. So MSA Swordens, great ear pro, highly recommend. In here I've got my iPro, so this is, um, I run the Oakley, oh boy, uh, I believe it's the FLAC 2.0, I think. Um, they have been really solid for me, so I always have a pair of clear lenses as well as a pair of Hunter's HD Golds. The Hunter HD Golds are my main match uh, eyewear. I really like the yellow lenses. I like the contrast it provides, um, but both of these are exactly the same. Um, so I like that a lot. Clear lenses I have found to come in very helpful at times, um, especially for night shoots or things like that, um, or potentially if I'm shooting long range, things like that. I don't always want the yellow tint, um, but whenever I'm shooting action pistol, action rifle, I'm gonna wear those. Um, those hunters HD gold highly recommend those keep my timer in here all the time even if I'm going to a match um, I'm going to have my timer in there uh, the timer uh, I've actually been at matches where the timers weren't working and so I just grab mine and use mine these sync up with the tablets on practice score which is really nice um, and then of course if you're going to the range by yourself you need to have a timer to work on stuff so uh, AMG lab commander timer again big shout out to Alex over at AMG He's uh, hooked me up um, and, and supported me, sent this timer out for me for free. Really appreciate him, and I love these timers quite a bit. Um, my inner ear, ear pro. So these are the autos, uh, auto noise barriers is what they're called. Um, these are a little bit expensive, but they are absolutely worth every single penny. So as far as shooting like accoutrements, this is by far the best value that I have of anything. Um, these are extremely comfortable in here. I did upgrade the foam tips to be the um, comply uh, canal tips. Um, that helps block out a lot more noise than the little rubber flange that it comes with. But these things will, the earbuds by themselves, will last easily 16, 18 hours, right? They probably last over 24 hours uh, of, of constant use. So maybe turning them off for lunch or something like that, but just being on constant. I've been wearing them what time did we start filming today, Justin? I mean, uh, 10 a.m., right? So I turned these on and I just threw these back in and they were depleted to 70%, right? So they only had 30% gone, 70% battery life. And when you stick them back in the charger, they jump right back up. Um, the case itself charges them and the case itself, I only generally charge twice a year. So really, really nice. I never have to worry about these having battery. Um, and once it gets down to maybe 20%, um, on the case, I'll go ahead and charge it up. I think I was at 10% on that thing for maybe like a month and I'm still good to go. So auto noise barriers, can't recommend them enough. Um, up here, I have a little uh, pouch. This is from Eberly Stock. And what I keep in here is just some pacers. So I keep these big craft uh, four by six shipping labels. And these end up being the perfect size to replace a big chunk of your A-zone when your target starts to get shot out. So if you guys are like me, um, you recycle and reuse targets until they can't be shot anymore, you can really repace the front of it with normal brown pacers, but these take it quite a bit farther. I've got some three inch 
circles on here. These are mo mainly for teaching, uh, for demoing confirmation levels. And then I've got uh, white, black, and brown pacers in here. So I'm never out of pacers. And that of course contributes to a really good training day um, as well. Uh, and that goes with my pacer gun. Up in here, I've got a uh, loose ammo. So this box, I believe is called a bang box from G-Code. Um, this was one of the first things that I got uh, for a range bag. It holds about 350 rounds in here of loose ammo. So I will load up my mags, which you'll see here in a second. And then I'll bring this thing about full with about 300 rounds. And that is gonna be well more than enough for any match that you're gonna be shooting. So bang box with loose ammo. And uh, oh, the other thing is a speed loader. Super important to have a speed loader, um, especially at matches, um, and especially at classes where you have to load your mags quite a bit. So that saves me a lot of time, brings a little bit of extra ammo for me. That's a good range session for me, that plus my loaded mags, um, and it's plenty of ammo to get through a match. All right, that's the top. Man, we are flying through here. So on the other side, uh, nope, this side. <laughs> so this side um, zips down. Again, we have another big water bottle pocket. And this opens up and you kind of got a little uh, library down here, if you will. So um, first thing is my magazines. Now, when I go to a match, I will typically bring six magazines with me. Uh, when I come to training, I generally bring about 10. If I go to a class, I bring like 30. Okay, um, Justin can attest, we were just at a, a class together, the Eric Fell class, and uh, I had, I think, 25 uh, 140s. So anyways, mags keep you shooting longer and uh, you don't have to be jamming mags, which is great. So in here, I've got a little um, insert. This actually came from another Savior range bag um, and I have six fully loaded mags in here. What I like about that is I can stick four um, I can grab three mags for my belt. So on my competition belt, I have three mag pouches. So I can load up my gun fully, right? And I'm ready to run a stage. And if for some reason I were to forget to reload my mags after a stage, I can just come over here. I can grab three fresh ones, replace every mag on my belt, be ready to go, and then catch up with all of the loading um, after that stage. So that's why I have six in here. I think it's a really good number to have for matches. Uh, you can do a bunch of training um, with six mags, but uh, just for just for ease of use, I'll generally bring um, about 10 or 12 if I'm just going to come to the range and train. Uh, okay, so match gun and backup gun. So um, something that competition shooters do a lot that I think is really smart is having a match gun and a backup gun. So the match gun for me is going to be my old trusty. It actually is the gun um, uh, out of my out of my five inch guns. I think this one has the most rounds on it right now. And um, this is the, uh, the M&P 2.0 five inch, right? Um, now, one of the questions I get all the time, just gonna answer this now, how do you find the five inch with the front serrations? It's a really dumb thing that Smith & Wesson does. They make this an LE model only, so law enforcement model only, um, which I wish they didn't do. I wish they would just make all of them available to everyone. Um, but if you know somebody who's law enforcement or whatever, they can probably help you out uh, potentially, you know, who knows? So. This is my old trusty, I've got a bunch of rounds on this, Apex Trigger, Trigicon SRO, and the Calculated Kinetics SRO Dog Tag Optic Plate. Highly recommend that plate. Um, and that's it, this thing is um, stock other than that. It's got a stock recoil spring, um, no rear sight because you don't need them. Yeah, that's the, that's the match gun. So um, that thing is ready to go at all times. And then in this one, the backup gun, is surprise surprise a gun that looks exactly the same so this is uh another five inch le model um, apex trigger the exact same model it's the older generation um, i've got a 2.5 moa sro i have a five on my main i wish this was a five but i got to set a deal um, i've got another sro plate uh, from calculated kinetics coming pretty soon i'll throw that on here i like those that way i'll have some continuity um, yeah, nothing to see here, exactly the same. So I like having those guns. If one gun goes down during a match or a class, I can just run and grab the other one. In fact, at the class we were just at with, uh, with Eric Rafael down in Florida, um, I went to go shoot a drill. I pulled my gun out and I had no dot and my optic battery had died. Instead of holding everybody else up who was waiting to go, I just went and grabbed my backup gun, threw it in the holster and shot the drill. And then I went and changed my optic battery. So it's really nice to have a backup gun. Um, it's a luxury, it's not a necessity, but it is nice to have. 
All right, I think that absolutely covers it for what we've got for the range bag. So again, this is the Savior Equipment Pro SEMA range bag, um, and this will get me through an entire day of training um, or an entire match or even a major match. So guys, if you uh, have any questions about anything you saw, please uh, feel free to let us know. Um, always happy to recommend really good equipment for you guys. Um, if you want to pick up a range bag, I highly, highly recommend Save Your Equipment. They've got this thing. They've also got uh, one called the Specialist, which I also have, which is also very nice. They've got a bunch of rifle bags, things like that. Um, so we appreciate those guys quite a bit. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Until next time, keep practicing and shooting. We'll see you on the range.